Okay, we're set up for our first buttonhole that we're going to drill. And if you can see, I've got a uh, pressure pressure treated piece of wood on the bottom side of the control panel. And there's a little bit of a bevel cut on the end there, and that just gives a little clearance for the, uh, the clamp. And uh, that's not by design, it's just the way that scrap wood was. I was using it for some railings. And uh, same on this side. Got a bit of a bevel cut, and that gives a little clearance for the clamp to clamp on. We clamped on that piece of wood, and we have one of the holes centered here perfectly. We're ready to drill that one. And like I said, this hole is for like the bottom row. Uh, so I don't have to move this piece of wood so far down to get to the bottom rows. And then this clamp, if you can see there, that's as far as it extends. It wouldn't be able to clamp if I moved that wood more than about an inch. It wouldn't even make contact. So the second hole gives us a hole that we can line up for the bottom row of buttons here. To be able to line up with these and these. And the hole that's there will do the top row. And uh, I've got it perfectly set in position have a scrap piece of 2x4. This is non-pressure treated, but it doesn't matter. You can use anything you want. That's just a backer in case we do go all the way through with our drill bit. Don't want to damage the porch or anything. And uh, it sticks out the other side, so it gives good firm support all the way across. Not really any rocking. You might want to move it around if you have it on a, a porch like this because, you know, boards bucking up and down on some porches, you might not get a even stability underneath your control panel. You don't want it wobbling when you're trying to drill these. But we're going to put this back in a tripod and we'll drill that first hole now. We'll go, we'll go about three-fourths of the way through, uh, at least halfway. And then we'll go on to the next hole and continue to get them all. And then we'll flip it over and do the back side. I'm just putting one knee down on the control panel. Since it's supported, there's no danger in breaking the control panel or hurting anything. But that just gives stability to the board. Uh, now ideally you'd want to have your control panel clamped to a table or something But since I'm doing this outside on the ground not as easy to clamp it So I'm just not going to clamp it. It's got enough support underneath. This is clamped in place and uh, Nothing should move since I've got you know half my weight down on my knee holding the board Losing power. Okay, my forward and reverse switch was halfway flipped. I didn't know that. Okay, we're good to go now. got to be careful we don't want to go all the way through so kind of hard to tell how far we went I think we can go a little bit farther yeah I think we went about halfway Okay, and as you can see there, didn't damage the paper anywhere except for just where that hole is. And it looks perfectly centered. Let me see if you guys can see this. I'll zoom in. Didn't damage the paper at all. We've went probably halfway or so. Yeah, it's about halfway into that maybe three-fourths away but you just it doesn't matter just try to be halfway if you can and then you'll finish it from the other side and uh, I mean I could go all the way through but I'm afraid it will splinter it some and I want it to look kinda clean so I'm gonna take it slow and do all these halfway through or so and then flip the board and do the rest of the way through um, the center of the spade bit is gonna mark it so that you know exactly how to position your spade bit up and you can finish it from the other side that should keep you from having any splintering we're gonna cut from here and I'll come back when I've got more of these done Just still working on the second hole. I just wanted to show you guys real quick. I made myself a quick little guide on a dowel. Don't know if you can see. Hopefully that's coming into focus. But uh, this is just a depth guide. That first mark there shows me the depth of one piece of uh, 
three quarter inch plywood or 23 30 seconds 22 30 seconds whatever that that is that I've got there very very much similar to three quarter inch not much difference at all maybe a sixteenth or eighth of an inch but um, that is a line showing the first depthness for the uh, part that we use for our guide that mark is showing that you have went deep enough to be halfway through the control panel and if you get to that dot that means you're about to break through the other side and you don't want to get that deep so I want to keep it about at that mark maybe just a little farther so I want to use that as a depth guide so I don't have to remove my template to check and everything Okay guys, that was our last hole on this side. We're going to flip it over and do the other side. It's turning out really well. I only had one problem and that was uh, I didn't go deep enough on this hole and so I tried to go just a little deeper and I actually broke through the other side. I didn't cause any major trouble but there was a slight bit of splintering on this one hole right here. And uh, it's my own fault. It was a little less than halfway and I tried to punch through a little deeper and that darn drill was so powerful this was only the second hole I was drilling because I'd finished this one and come back to this one and it just punched through and it didn't really damage it it just it just chipped it a little bit on the other side and the button nut will completely cover it up but I was much more careful on the next ones as I went through and I started using my little depth stick here as a guide and everything worked out good so all the rest of them are about about halfway through the depth so that should be good. Just give you a little look at it right there. Looking pretty nice. As you can see, all these holes are staying dead center. So no problems. Just showing you the back side of the board, guys. It's going pretty smoothly, but I have noticed that uh, even though the bits start very great, seem to be centering great, as soon as they punch through, and knock this little chip out it's like they won't drill all the way through because as soon as it hits that weak spot it just breaks this whole thing out now you would think only the outside edge on the inside of the hole would have any roughness to it when it punches this out but for some reason it's pulling a little chunk loose right there and you can see it's done it on on every single one of these three right here um, the hole will start fine and it'll be scoring it in a perfect circle and it'll start drilling down as soon as it goes about a quarter of an inch down and it breaks through it's like it pulls a piece of the ply from on up loose with it and I don't know why it's doing it, it doesn't make good sense to me but uh, I'm making sure I have the drill good and plumb straight up and down and as soon as it starts scoring it's making a perfect circle and it goes down almost a quarter inch before it does that and when it breaks loose it's like it's like the bit somehow grabs a little chunk there and pulls it with it. Now it'll be completely covered with the button nuts, but I'm looking at that and I'm saying what what is the lesser of two evils? Do I like that since there's no splintering? Or do I like that better that has a little splintering but it looks much more perfectly round? And I'm not sure. I'm going to make a decision about that and come back in a few minutes. So uh, I may go ahead and flip the board over and finish all the holes all the way through and just keep a, this piece of 2x4 as a backing and just hope it doesn't splinter you know, quite as much as this one, but I may keep on doing it like this. And Neither one is going to be noticeable when the control panel is all the way together. I just like it to be completely uniform and, and neat. To me, that hole actually looks slightly neater, but like if I paint the inside of the control panel here, then you're going to see that probably a little bit. Well. You won't after the button nuts on. After the button nuts on and everything's in place, you won't see any of this. So I'm just being a little too picky, I guess. So we'll continue on and figure out which way we want to go. 
Just showing you how it turned out, guys. Everything looks really good to me. The more I see it, the more I like the curved layout. And uh, all our buttons come up pretty much dead center. That's not chipping of the wood, by the way. That's the paper. The paper didn't even really tear that much. That was surprising. And our joystick hole there might be a 30 seconds of an inch off from the line but the good thing about the joystick is uh, I could see that black line inside of my little uh, jig that I had to drill down into I didn't have to draw a line around there using the plexiglass it was already small enough so I could see it so I was able to center it perfectly I just wish these were printed the same way but uh, hey I'm just glad that uh, slag coin had these for me to go by now all we gotta do is the other side and we'll have all the buttons except for, uh, you know, like control buttons and stuff that we're going to put up through here and trackball, the trackball hole. And uh, I may come back and do the trackball hole first and then keep pondering over where I want to put all my other buttons because I don't really know exactly how many I'm going to have. And I'm thinking about putting one button on each side of the control panel box for pinball simulations. But uh, let me flip it over and show you the other side. As you can see, some of them did, like I, I say, they made like a little place there. And I really couldn't do that much about it drilling from this side. I thought about going ahead and doing them all straight through like this one where it just splintered around, you know, most of the circle. But, uh, like that one, and that one's probably the worst out of all of them. But if you see, it's just near the beginning, but it's just crazy because the bit would make a perfect circle. And as soon as it'd start going down into the wood before it broke loose, that's when that would happen. And I don't know if it was jostling to the side right when it broke through or what I couldn't tell really but uh, it's nothing that won't be covered it's still still almost dead perfect and uh, this one let's see this one right here turned out almost the most perfect you see this that little bit of chipping well what it was is I came almost the full depth with the spade bit through the other side there was only I'd say between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch of wood left I went a little little too deep on it accidentally well, as soon as it started scoring the hole, it just broke one solid circu circular piece of wood off, and it was almost perfect. So I think on the other side, what I'm going to start doing is uh, going almost the full depth. I'm going to measure on my stick and, uh, you know, make sure that it is, you know, set so that I can tell where just a hair before it pops through is, and then stop. And once I do that, um, I'll know I can just flip the board over and finish from the other side. And it'll probably be this clean, you know. I think that's about the cleanest hole I have. But almost all of them have that one little chip right there. This one actually has a place right here, kind of, and place kind of right there. It's not terrible or anything. It's nothing I can't kind of smooth and file just a little bit or sand just a little bit, but I don't like it. <laughs> Other side looks great, though. I'll take the piece of paper off soon and... Uh, See exactly how good it looks. All right, guys, we got the first side of the other side of the control panel done. Went a little deeper on these holes, so it should only be, I'd say, somewhere around an eighth of an inch or so before you pop through the other side. So it shouldn't take very much from the drill bit to pop through the other side. And I'm hoping that'll just make those holes a little cleaner. I think what was happening on the other side was uh, it was, uh, you know, I was going a little deep and uh, as I started to go, as soon as it popped through deep, maybe uh, one side of that spade bit caught and forced the other side to jump to the side and chip off some up near the top because it's uh, the end of the spade bit is sharp, probably about a half of, half of an inch up the side of the blade and I think the side of it was catching and making that little gouge. So hopefully, just scoring the bottom of these will be enough to just break them off like a perfect circle. And it'll, it'll be a real clean hole from both sides. But I uh, hope I get the rest of this finished. I'm about to have my brother-in-law come over. And uh, he wanted to come over and hang out for a while and play some Call of Duty on the Xbox. So we're going to do that a little bit here in a while. But hopefully I'll have this done by then. Just wanted to show you guys this method is working out fantastic. Each piece is just breaking loose like a little clean circle and falling down into the hole and it's not gouging up the other side. 
so it's working absolutely the way it needs to and I'm going to finish the last few here I'll, I'm going to do a couple of on camera just so you can see it's actually making very clean holes I'll move the camera up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing and see just how clean the holes are See there how it popped the one little chunk loose. Got us a nice clean hole. Sorry about the noise as my air compressor kicking on. But uh, if my head wasn't in the way, you've seen how cleanly those broke through. Well, I can get them out from the other side, but all those pop through just like that. I'm going to finish the last four holes off camera. I'll show you the results of everything. Okay guys, I got all the holes drilled, except for maybe the uh, buttons you use to like access menus and stuff, or your player one and two start and coin up buttons. We're going to decide where to put those pretty soon, but uh, it turned out pretty good, I think. Didn't have too many troubles. This, this first side, of course, I had a little bit of chipping out on the bottom side. It's all going to be covered with button nuts, no big problems. Top looks really good on both of them, but uh, just this little bit of chipping and stuff that was happening. I remedied it on this side. If you can see, really good buttons or button holes. Nice, nice clean holes to be done with a spade bit. I mean, really, you can't ask usually that good from a spade bit. But spade bits, they remove a lot of material quickly. They do make pretty clean holes, but you do have a little tear out on the other side sometimes. But uh, that trick that I used worked. You just stop. You know, maybe an eighth of an inch or so before the end of your hole if you can figure out the depth to stop at. And I just kept using my little dowel that I had marked to figure out when I was getting real close to the other side. And I stopped maybe an eighth of an inch or so before that. And you got to also remember that the sides of those spade bits, the sides of the spade bits, see right here, there's a point on each side that adds another sixteenth to eighth to an inch to the side of the blade that will make it go just a little deeper than what you think so when you measure down in there the dowel is going to seat down at the at the edge of the cut there where it, the cutting edge that's where it'll seat down but actually the cut around the perimeter of the hole or the diameter or whatever you want to say the circumference of the hole is going to uh, be a little deeper because of these little pointy parts on the side of the the drill bit so you'll probably be a lot closer to popping through the other side than what you think you are. And then when you flip it over and insert the center part right into the hole, these on the side only have to dig in, you know, probably a sixteenth of an inch or so before it starts breaking through. 
and you just have to be ready for that don't speed your drill up too much because if it breaks loose all of a sudden and you've got that drill bit angled you could really mess your hole up so these drill bits are much cheaper than a Forstner though and I'd much rather use that than pay you know thirty something to fifty dollars for a Forstner bit some of them actually do go higher than that it just depends if you find a big kit you might get a big kit of them and that will reduce your price for each bit down to you know ten to twenty dollars it just depends on the size of the Forstner bit and the uh, manufacturer but we're gonna clean up our mess here get our control panel back in and uh, probably start deciding where we want to put our additional buttons it'll be probably anywhere from here on over across to about here we may put some right in this area since the track ball is going to be right down in this area we got to figure out where to put the track ball hole too and we've got a hole saw in there that should be the right size and we'll have to do a test hole with it and uh, take the track ball and set it behind the test hole on a scrap piece of plywood to make sure that's going to make the size hole we need without leaving it too big